My hat straight, man. Let me turn this ring off. Cool, yeah. So. Hat good. Okay, easy. We already recording. I don't even want to. Let's just jump right into it, man. Let's uh, do it. You know, y'all, I appreciate y'all joining us, man, for another episode of Fatherhood is Dope, the podcast. We are live right now, uh, or it's on video, but yeah. for my listening audience on iTunes, yeah. Apple, Stitcher, Google, then I want to remind you all that you can check out this interview in video format on YouTube. Again, I am, or this is my first time saying it, but if you've been listening, you know me, but I'm your host, Aaron McGee. You are listening to Fatherhood is Dope, the podcast. I got my guest, my friend, my brother, Terrell Hope with me today. Yeah. I'm in his city right now. In Dallas. Dallas, Texas. Um, and I'm really just catching my breath right now because Rail just hooked me up. Real quick. I'm talking about right quick. You know, it was like a five minute situation. I don't even think it was it. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. And uh, so so Terrell and I we just played a uh, pool together. Um it was just as a warm up and I was just trying to you know, I wasn't really playing for real. Oh um, man, you know. No, people. I wasn't. I wasn't. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> Since this is your show, we're gonna well, let you get, well, and, we're gonna and, let you. And get all, that. honestly, I didn't even have time to play for real for real because okay. he was knocking balls off the table left and right. But Guys, let's 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 get to kind of the formality. All right, so right. you're listening to Fatherhood is Dope, the podcast. Uh, today, my 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 guest is Terrell Hope. I already set it up, my brother, my friend, um, and he's a father that I've been admiring for. You are a father that I've been admiring, man, since day one, since you became a father, and right. and you know me, you know, uh, man, I communicate generally just how I feel about a matter and I've told you from jump every time I get like how much you inspire me as a father true story and that's one of the re the reasons why I wanted to make sure that um that we got to have this conversation together um if you if you've been listening to the podcast if you've been watching us on YouTube then you know man what what I'm about I really I have the the privilege of just being connected to like so many great men who happen to be fathers right. and who actually inspire me so I hadn't even had to like go outside of the perimeters just yet because my network of right, so connected. positive, right. healthy fathers is so strong that I'm trying to exalt my network first before I had to start going out. And and I know that I don't want to go outside of the circle without making sure that I get men like you who have really kind of just, man, um, made a, a huge impression in my life in the area of fatherhood. So... Good deal. That's what we are, man. Hey, so I know I know a whole lot about you, but but let's 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 say I do. Okay. Or let's act like I don't, but no, I do. Um, but for my guests, man, how about you just kind of fill people in about who you are, okay. what you do, what you about? Um, just like you said, man, you and I have been knowing each other. Oh man, we I'm gonna date it because it. it's just <laughs> it's just now it's 2020. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yep. what oh five? Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, so yep. we we a decade and a half yep. into you said a decade. It really sound old. It really yeah, sound yeah, like yeah, a long yeah, time. Yeah. So you've seen you've seen me come from oh man uh, a trajectory yeah. of growth, and I'm sure it has something to do with your particular admiration mm -hmm. for me as a man and a father. Um, so Terrell, originally from Memphis, Tennessee. Nala and I, my daughter, we've been in Dallas now for a little bit over three years. Yeah. So October of 2016, I've been here. Primarily a real estate investor um, and also a photographer. So uh, we just keep that kind of short and sweet in terms of yeah, what yeah. I actually do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Some people are like, what you do, man? Hey. All hey. of it. <laughs> hey. And like I always say, if you know Terrell, man, then you know this man, hands is an everything bro that's so funny man because it's thursday and uh we're skydiving on saturday again yeah again we run it i got a whole crew now so i'm we, sick of you bro we're oh, running really? it back yeah so i mean just it's just the crux of me and my hands like you said my hands in different pots yeah so uh yeah so i reached into my network and gathered a group of crazy people and we're going skydiving so but in a nutshell yeah i'm a real estate investor mm -hmm. man uh father and a photographer um, and for the most part, man, it's just this is me, little yeah. little old guy from Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah, entrepreneur, man. Entrepreneur. Um, and you, you've been that guy just as long as I've known you. Um, always, whether it was whether it's selling candy, man, <laughs> doing IT stuff, fixing laptops, yeah, um, the whole real estate piece, yeah. 
uh, there's a number of other things that come to mind. I'm like, yo, uh, and then when I met you, you were doing like, uh, oh no, not when I met you, but you know, after the whole college transition, you were like into a, like, I don't know if it was internet marketing or um, you know, a web design. Web design. I think you built my first website. Probably more than likely. Like for the, <laughs> for the, for the Just Aaron show. I did do the Just Aaron yeah, show. I think you hey, my logo. The logo, everything. yeah, some of the design work. Bro, I think, so the everything website. I had for Just Aaron, man, that came right out of the mind of Terrell Hope. So That's wild, um, yeah. If you know what Just Aaron is, then... You a real one, and you've been with me since day you one. Just, so you I, take it back, like, <laughs> literally a decade. Took it back, literally a decade. So I appreciate that. Yeah, um, man. Let's, what's up with your with your sweatshirt? I know both of us we branded. You know, I don't wore this a couple of times. I got my Jesus and therapy situation if y'all, on. Yeah, if y'all can see it good, man. Uh, make is make melanin flourish again, yeah. and uh, we, we kind of know what the make X is X again comes from. A mm-hmm. lot of us are familiar with that particular term in terms of its politics. So this particular brand, uh, it's it's called Humble Flourish, yeah. and they have just some really dope stuff. They're based here out of the Dallas area, and I picked up this sweatshirt from them, man, because I like what it stood for. Obviously, uh, in terms of the color, the color scheme, um, and what it means for us. So mm-hmm. we just rocking with that one today, man. Yeah, that's what. And I like yeah the, the Jesus and therapy joint. Yeah, man. So if, it's all on accident, matter of fact. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It's just by, like by chance. <laughs> I was like, real. This either I got a black top or uh, or this. Like I'm, I'm traveling light to Dallas. I, I'm, yeah. I'm in and out. Yeah. But here's the thing. Um, this sweatshirt situation, man. Because I think I took a picture in this before. Um, I got this when I went to uh, this this uh, poet show called Poets in Autumn. Mm-hmm. And because everybody asked me about this, and so um, Preston Perry. Uh, who is married to Jackie Perry? Jackie, yeah. Uh, they're they're so freaking dope. I miss man. so, not to interrupt you, no, but you they didn't. came here uh, uh, and you didn't go. No, I went to the show. Okay, this was one of the only ones that Jackie wasn't present. Ah, uh, you look at the website; they yeah. had all the dates, and then this one has the asterisk by it. Jackie wasn't yeah. there. Yeah. Um, but I had an opportunity to see Jackie. Okay, in, like. I mean, about three years ago. Okay. Three, actually, longer okay. than that. It was before you Dallas. Know, you know something? She's not even fair, bro. I'm going to just be straight up honest. Like, I follow her on, on social media and online, and I see her. But um, my brother had saw them when they came to, uh, I think they came to Brooklyn or somewhere in the right. greater New York area. And he, ca- he he left with the sweatshirt. He bought the book. He did the whole thing. I was like, ah, they got you. And the closest they were coming to Nashville was Memphis. So we drove up to Memphis to see them. I talked to you that day. Yep. Yeah, you and y'all was yep. like, the day or the day before. When y'all yeah, was yeah, yeah. Oh, Memphis. no, 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 no. We were together earlier that morning. We have a picture from that day. We was at the pet ah, rally. We was at the pet rally. Show us. Yeah, so I left. <laughs> I left so, TSU, so I left the TSU Jackie. Yeah. Listen, this is how much I rock with y'all. Everybody yeah. knows me that Tennessee State University, that's my heart. It's my alma mater. It's homecoming. all alma mater. It's homecoming, yeah. It's homecoming, and there's nothing else. That That's my favorite holiday of the year, homecoming. Right. So, I left after the pet rally. I t- probably snapped it up with you, and I was like, all right, bro, I'm getting on the road to Memphis. Okay. We left. I didn't do any of the Friday night stuff. We left Nashville, drove to Memphis that night just to see Poets in Autumn, and when I tell you, I was not mad about it at all, man. Like, the whole crew is good, mm-hmm. but, man, Jackie is a beast. She's phenomenal, man. She has this little special piece that she does where she takes it all backwards, and that's all I'm going to say cause, mm-hmm. so y'all can keep buying y'all tickets to their show. Yeah, you got to go see it in yeah. person, man. And it's... her and Preston, they do a piece together that was just, just left me in chills. So not only did I buy the ticket, not only did I drive to Memphis, but then I, pro- I left Teresa and I, we we spent about another hundred twenty dollars on like just sweatshirts and hats, and because honestly they were worth it, and I wanted to support that whole situation, man. So right. yeah, so if you never heard of the story behind why I or where I got this from and why I got it, and my wife is is um is finishing up her master's man in in therapy anyway, so. And I love Jesus, so hey. there we go. All right, let's get back to you. No All right, so be. fatherhood, man. Let's let's talk about it. You know, I always call it the cub, man. Mm-hmm. And you know, for one, I think I think I clearly got the name from you. But tell us in reference to why you call her the the cub. Do you still call her the cub? Um, it's been a while. I know she. Nah, was. man. <laughs> <laughs> Nala is now <laughs> almost eleven years old. Yeah, 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 in a yeah, couple yeah. of months. If if but, she still got a couple of nicknames, I still call her. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Pooh, and I call her Tyke. Yeah. So, um, but, but where did where did the whole Cub reference come from? Um, 
I, I could be real deep, or I could just say, I don't. It was just a young, I guess, a younger version of me, just like you know, okay. in, in the safari or whatever. But I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna go the deep route because I want to give some kind of some context on her name. Okay. So Nala's name is in the West African name. Yeah. Um, and it also has some connection to Hebrew. Mm-hmm. So in West Africa, it's to make complete. Yeah. In Hebrew, it's beloved daughter. It's my first daughter. And and people hear the name Nala, mm-hmm. oftentimes they're associated to Lion King. Duh. Yeah. You know, so it's like, oh, like Lion King. Yeah. Just like Lion King. Yeah. So that's kind of how, you know, I make the connection a couple different ways in terms of like her being cub. Mm-hmm. And, and you're okay. probably one of the few people that actually... That does reference Nala as the cub. As soon as I text, bro. <laughs> how, how, how you in the cub, bro, man? Right, the cub. Because she, cause she been, she's been your rider, you know what I'm man. saying? Or you've been her rider, or vice versa, depending on which right. way you want to split it. So, you know, that's for me, that's the affectionate perspective that I kind of, like, keep her in, man. Just when I think about you and this whole in the vein of, like, fatherhood. So, um, story. man, you made, like... Several or a couple transitions, you know, from Nashville to Memphis to Dallas, and I think I'm I'm interested to know um, how you're navigating those dynamics. Like as an entrepreneur, what's your what's your marital status? I'm a single man. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, I know that, right? Right. But you know, as an entrepreneur, for as atmosphere. A- <laughs> <laughs> for right. People. Right. Okay. No, but uh, but as a single father, as an entrepreneur. And really, be entrepreneur slash uh, adventurous, adventurous or right. uh, semi philanthropy. Yeah, yeah, no, philanthropy. Like you know, all, I'll be trying all, to do all a these bit. different hats that you wear. Right. I'm trying to see, and I, and man, you know, we we talk on on a on an intimate level in the area of fatherhood, and I'm always impressed on how or the fact that Nala is still like priority in all that you're doing with knowing everything else that's important to you so i just kind of want to hear from your perspective like just share with me like how are you managing that type of mindset how do you keep her at the forefront and still right. like go daringly because pause and i say <laughs> this man that's an entrepreneur like this is the he you you are like the go for broke entrepreneur like I'm talking about on the line you, you like bro I got five dollars left this what I'm, I'm I gotta flip this five dollars to make it work I'm to, and I've seen you do it One year way after or another. year after that's, year that's funny you say that uh, this is really a quick little story I was uh I was at one of my complexes yeah. yesterday just doing some check in before my cleaners came and I passed the dumpster yeah and I seen a couch that was fly. <laughs> Somebody just threw this couch out. Yeah. And then when I circled back around about an hour or so later, coming coming back, I seen a table yeah. that was like <laughs> a real wood table. Yeah, yeah. And my wheels got to turning. Yeah. And I was like, I should just go ahead and take both of them and yeah. sell them. Because yeah. I didn't really need yeah. them at the time. Um, and I've done that so many times. Because I think, I think it's just being in positions oftentimes to where opportunities come. And you don't foresee them coming, but you just mm-hmm. make the best of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and for me, I've been in that situation so many times where where me just trying to squeeze an opportunity out of yeah. something that probably wasn't even necessarily in my in my mind just supposed to be there yeah. until I seen it and then yeah. I made the best of it. Yeah. So when it comes to trying to like wear all these hats and figure out life as a father, uh, and let's not forget, I, I Nala is almost eleven, mm-hmm. and my youngest Bella. Mm-hmm. Don't forget about Bella. Bella be, they turn the same month. Bella be uh, one in March as well. Yep. Uh, so when it when I, it, I didn't forget about Bella for the record. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, I know that. I just want, I just want to set that tone uh, for the people who don't know. <laughs> so, but so, but when it when it comes to trying to make it all happen, man, and wearing those those hats. I'm just like you said, man. I just I just go for broke. Mm-hmm. If it's anything in particular that I want to pursue, uh, I've learned, and, and it was years in development, just not to give a crap about it, and to just go for what I know yeah. and make the best of it. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, even even given some of the failures, I think I've done exceptionally well mm-hmm. for myself and you know for my family and some of the achievements that I have a claim to. So yeah, yeah. That's that's sweet, man. Um, that's pretty loaded. Uh, one thing that that stuck out, or the the undercurrent theme that I heard you talk to, is just this sense of opportunities. 
and I really would want you to speak to <clears throat> the word opportunist mm-hmm. because so many people or generally when you hear opportunity, so many of us associate that with a negative yeah, term, exactly. like taking advantage or of somebody or of something. Right. But I've been of the mindset lately uh, of changing uh, flipping the script on the the idea of what an opportunist uh, opportunist is, and so what is your perspective on just being an opportunist? Um, and then I'll share mine. I think strategically capitalizing. If I had to sum it all up, uh, so so we have the negative connotation with opportunities, yeah. opportunists, <clears throat> because we put it in the box of somebody trying to get over yeah. or somebody trying to position themselves as a as a one up and mm-hmm. negating whoever else that might be at the table for a particular venture for yeah. a particular whatever it is um, so i think i think you know just taking advantage of what you have mm-hmm. right then mm-hmm. and you know not necessarily waiting on it and putting yourself in a box to where you over analyzing what's going yeah. on and just going for it capitalizing on that particular moment mm-hmm. In a nutshell, for me, that's what it means, just to capitalize. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm right there with you uh, because I, I feel like I'm an opportunist. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I'm wearing that as a badge of honor, like right here. Mm-hmm. And I think that um, I think that, that that's kind of a hallmark for our generation as well. You know, um, I, you know, I've been working in the nonprofit mm-hmm. sector literally for over a decade now. And leaving, I stepped down from my position as a CEO, executive director of a local nonprofit and my wife was asking me like have you been looking for a job are you on indeed you know what's next right and my whole mindset was like i'm not looking to go to another job right you know i'm looking for the next opportunity and with my type of skill set you got to know yourself too with my type of skill set i'm a little nimble i'm a little flexible and i have hardcore skill sets around like project management and some consulting piece and so in my mindset i'm like well a a, a job Right, uh, may not be the the right fit, but when the, when the opportunity, when I hear the right opportunity, then like you said, I think you said something to the degree of like season the moment or strategic yeah, just strategic capitalization, strategic Capitalize capitalization. On it. Yeah, and that's what I'm doing. I'm capitalizing on the moment of, in that opportunity, man. And, and 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 another thing to add to that too is, I think it, it matters what type of intent that you have. Yeah, you know when you talk about opportunity, what. What's the reason behind it? What are you What are you really doing? Mm-hmm. What's What's the end goal? Who is it going to benefit? Mm-hmm. Or is it just Is it just a selfish act? Mm-hmm. Um, and we talk about parenthood. Oftentimes, <laughs> you know, it's when the when the child gets here. When you when you have a baby, I mean, you're second at that particular point. It, you got to put what's best for you and that child in forefront of everything at yeah. that particular moment. Um, and just had the right intent behind it. Yeah, man, you know a lot of guys, <clears throat> a lot of cats from the Tennessee area, a lot of cats from the Texas area who who are fathers and who fall on the on the spectrum somewhere, whether they're single, married, whatever their status is. Um, man, what what do you feel like is like on trend right now in the area of fatherhood? I use on trend because social media definitely comes to mind with like the type of images that we're seeing. But like, what's what's popping up, up on your radar? Like, how do you feel about the current state of fatherhood. Uh, what's on trend? Yeah, I don't know, man. It's 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 hard to say what's on trend. I think I think what I'm proud of as a people, as a culture, me being a black man specifically, is that I think we're putting more emphasis on the narrative of positive black father influences. Yeah. That's on that's Ver- that would be on trend. Yeah, versus what. <clears throat> versus what oftentimes, especially coming from a place you and I are familiar with, where, mm-hmm. where we are in our personal life, yeah. what we used to hearing that, you know, they ain't, th- they're, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, negligent, yeah, 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 they're yeah. not there, they're yeah. absent, or yeah. whatever the case may be. Man, I could, I could pick out a great deal, and it could just be my particular, like you said, sphere of influence and network of mm-hmm. people, but I could pick out a great deal of guys who are still stepping in and doing what they supposed to do yeah. whether they be local with the kid whether they be yeah. you know f- a thousand yeah, miles yeah, away yeah, yeah. they're making those flights they're they're doing a FaceTime they're mm-hmm. they're fi- they're supporting financially you know what I mean they might not be in the household but they're doing what they're supposed to do in terms of 
more being there. So living on the right spectrum of morale in terms of parenthood. That's good. You know, I see, and I'm I'm proud to see and to say that I've. If is that like you said, if it's on trend, mm-hmm. I feel like that spectrum is happening. Yeah. That's that's what's happening. Yeah. That, that, that 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 paradigm shift is, yeah. is continuously happening, and I love to see it, man. Like I I love to see it, brother. I'll be like, man, do your thing. Do your, I don't yeah, know yeah. you from yeah, Eve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> I yeah. don't know. I don't know you from but, Adam. But you, but you see, but you see, you see it in in motion. You see it in real time. It feels and it feels good to like be living in that moment. Yeah. Because I can remember in middle school where the conversation was quite different. Yeah. Of course, your daddy ain't this. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, you com- got a daddy. Your conversation, you know what I mean? Yeah. You see, what I'm yeah, yeah. exactly. So, and in, in it's cool to be at my particular age and and, and and where I am in terms of a parent and and just growth to, like you said, see it. Yeah, see it change. Man, um, I didn't know what response you was gonna give, but I'm I'm pleasantly I'm pleasantly surprised and excited because two thoughts come to mind. One, you really just summed up what what this what this platform is all about for me man and um i try to reiterate it as much as possible that fatherhood is dope is like fatherhood is doing our part every day it's the Mm -hmm. acronym and what i'm about is just celebrating men who are showing up like you said whether it's on a zoom or skype call have you make facetime right you gotta fly out right you gotta do like have you decided to step up to the plate and own your role as a father, and it looks different for so many of us. So um, exactly. So yeah, I mean, and I see that. I think I think fatherhood is on trend, and so I'm excited to be a part of the movement uh, in the way that I decided to in, to engage. And I know that you are part of this movement, the fatherhood movement, in terms of changing the narrative, um, right. whether it's socially, whether it's in the media. Um, not because you do a podcast or because you do a show, but because you are who you are. You wear the hats that you are. And you don't forsake your position as father, as True. father. And and to add to that, and I, I I've never been afraid to have those conversations with with men when <laughs> I feel like I can interject a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, you know you gotta you gotta change it up. You gotta go a little harder, whatever mm-hmm. it is. Mm-hmm. And you you know that you know if you were to call me and you ask me something, I'm gonna give you the real yeah, talk straight up. And it, just like that, so I just like you're creating the content, having those conversations, and bringing to light. The greatness of fatherhood and showcasing the way that it really is dope. You know, I'm doing it the same way in terms of like a smaller, a smaller piece. Yeah. Just you got. And I think and I encourage anybody to do that, man. You got to have those conversations with your homies, with your cousins, with whomever. Yeah, man, do your part. And they like, watching. Like, let's not have no, let's not have excuses about what's going on. Like, just do your part. Yeah. Because these kids will grow up. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah, know what's up. And we realize we got so many resources, man. And I'm not not to speak into a situation that I don't know anything about, but I'm generalizing and contextualizing the fact that with all of the resources that we have today, we live in a first world country. In my experience, and I know I'm talking from like college educated, uh, dual you know, household, et cetera, so... Mm-hmm. However, I, I walked on both sides of the tracks, right? Right. Um, I I personally feel like it is easier in today's time to show up as a man, as a father, because of voices like you. You said you're doing your small thing or you're doing it on a smaller scale. Regardless of the, the size of the scale, I think it's the, the point is all of us are like doing our part, contributing, right. influencing whether you work you know, whether you're behind the counter at, uh, I don't know, Publix or behind the register at Publix or sitting in a C-suite at Google. It's like most men, I, I, the perspective that, I, that I've had is that you see men like a couple of generations ago who, you know, they go to work. It's, it's a black and white situation, right? Mm-hmm. And you never hear the voice of their child in terms of from their perspective. But nowadays, uh, my experience is that, man, you know, at least in, in my in my circle, right? You know the guys who who have children, man, because it's like so many men are not just investing in the next generation, and that's not to say that uh, the fathers of the past did not invest in the next generation. I think with the help of social media too, we get we see, more yeah. visuals right. of how. So it's not just. Uh, I'm going to work from nine to five, and I work a second job to take right, care of the household right. to put you through college. Is that men are still doing that, 
But now we get the picture of them smiling side by side right. and wearing matching Christmas pajamas and right. matching Tim's. At least that's what we do over <laughs> at, at our house. So right. that's, that's good. But on, um, on another point that you said real quick, um, contextually, man, I've talked to so many men and as like you said, as a black male, as a black man, I, I always think about my plight as well. Mm-hmm. But you know, not all of my conversations make it to the platform clearly. But man, I have I've talked to white men, I've talked to Latino men, Mexican men, Hispanic mm-hmm. men, um, and, and and other brothers who who yeah, they may not have the it's not the same context, but the scenarios are like mirror. You know, like right. parallel trails. It's you universe. know, literally on the other side of the track. Universe. And, right. and and their dads may have been in the house but emotionally unavailable and or out of the house and emotionally emotionally unavailable as well. So, you know, that's a factor, man. Um I'm interested in like how do you transition? You know, my daughter is about to be three mm-hmm. and you have a daughter that's about to be eleven. And so I've seen you go through like all these different states of like preschool daycare kindergarten <laughs> now like how do you what what type of mind state do are you in or do you prepare yourself for as you see the transitions of like i don't know if this make you feel uncomfortable but bro your daughter is like about to hit puberty you know what for i mean sure. and gonna be a teenager like what type of mind state does that put you in and your oldest daughter right <laughs> right right so honestly i, I wish i had like a super magic answer for that. I yeah. think for me, those moments come very organic. Mm-hmm. And it could be as simple as rewinding back to a couple of years ago to when my daughter got in the car after picking her up from school and out of nowhere, she was like, have you ever had a crush? <laughs> you know, so <laughs> blew my mind. No, never. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. What is a crush? <laughs> yeah. Google, you know. <laughs> so for me, there was a, it was a real organic moment, but I've always lived on Within the confines of what makes sense, not not sugarcoating and not not, not lying to her, you know mm-hmm, what I mean. Mm-hmm. So for me, that was a, and I knew it was gonna be some follow up questions because I know who she is. Yeah, of course. It's just not. She's her, she's you know her I mean? father's daughter. So it was again. It was just one of those organic moments. So I answered it. We I shared a story about being in the fourth grade and my particular what I felt like was my first girlfriend and crush mm-hmm. and all of that stuff. And then fast forward to her just having a doctor's appointment uh, a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. and we and we've had the conversation before, but it's revisiting the conversation about menstrual cycles mm-hmm, and stuff mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. Um, Hold on, bro. Did you did you have to say that through your teeth? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, it wasn't it's always, no, no. So it's I'll, having those conversations about the menstrual know. cycle. <laughs> That's real. <laughs> So come on and, and hold on before you go any further. Let's let's not tee out this up now. Right, right. <laughs> don't do me like that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, okay, okay. Now don't do me like that. So so it was it was again it was one of those. It's just it's living in the moment, mm-hmm. and I I guess shifting a little bit to try to figure out how to how to bring it to her in the conversation she feels and understand. Yeah, me being dad, yeah, but, you know, bring it down. Have those real conversation and just live in the moment, yep. and and have whatever it may be, whether it's a particular concern of hers or whether it's me feeling like this is a teachable moment, yeah. or whatever it is. For oftentimes, to me, it just happened organically. There's no preparation. Yeah, is because you don't you don't know what's you don't see it. Mm-hmm. You don't see it coming. And first first go around with Nala being my first child and, and almost eleven years old, and then I don't have a woman in the house. Mm-hmm. So a lot of that is me just trying to figure it out on the spot. Yep. How do we have this conversation the right way and it really resonate with her? So that's that's just it for me, man. This is how it works for me. That's good, man. So yeah. it sounds like a lot of uh, trial by error. That's it. That's it. I think it comes with it comes with understanding your particular position and understanding the relationship that you have uh, and and how to connect with your child. Yeah, uh, I think that's very important. Because we know how we know stuff. Mm-hmm. But it may or may not resonate with Nalo Journey the yeah. same way. Yeah. So we got to figure out how to speak their language. Because yeah, in, our, in our context, it's different. Exactly. Um, yeah, you just mentioned about, you know, not, not having a woman in the house, being a single father, right? But um, I, I know for a fact you don't, you don't do it on your own, although you are 
although you're doing it on your own. And so, right. long story short, I was trying to be clever in that moment. <laughs> I hope it landed with somebody, right? Somebody got it. Exactly. All it takes is one. <laughs> <laughs> but so, but my question is here: like, can you just expound upon like your let your network, yeah. um, your circle, like the folks that you lean into um, that that helps you in the rearing of your child? Yeah. Um. So I do. I do have some some women that I can reach out to for certain subjects mm-hmm. that I, I feel comfortable enough to, whether it be something about hair, mm-hmm. whether it be something about, like I said, how to have a certain conversation. Yep. And here here locally, I got a couple of good friends that I not only trust, yeah. but that Nala trusts and understands. That's important. Right. That that if I feel like I need to either have a hard conversation or to just look out for for a few hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, even I've had to take a flight and uh, <laughs> my friend held me down. I was gone for like four days. Wow. So, Nala travels with me quite often, but there is sometimes where, yeah, mm-hmm. where I have to lean on somebody. Mm-hmm. So, when it when it comes to man parent and, and, and parenthood and, and fatherhood in particular and that family, I think the network is has to be strong. Yeah. And we always heard that when, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. Yeah, yeah. For us, it has to. And you to, subscribe to that for sure. Have, yeah. have to because we don't we don't have any traditional family here. Mm-hmm. No, not no, not a cousin, not a aunt, not nothing. Yeah. So it's just it's just long time friends and and people that have become family. You know, friends merge into family that we trust mm-hmm. that uh, have our best interests at heart. So uh, and people know who they are, man. I really appreciate. Being in those positions and looking out when we when we really need you to, yeah, yeah. That's love, man. What's your hope for the next? I guess the next this next phase of life, man. Around um, this is a general perspective. This next mm-hmm. phase of life for just men in their role as a father. Um, and this 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 would be the moment for for you to you know kind of allude to, or the the the, the follow up question is, what would be a word of encouragement to them? Word of encouragement. For, for one, <laughs> I think men should do what they can uh, first proactively if they don't feel like they're ready to be a father. Mm-hmm. As, as, as good as it might feel without giving real graphic, yeah. I think if you if you not if you not feeling like you can jump in and step up, yeah. then be as proactive as you can before yeah. you place Slow down yourself in that position. And if you're fortunate enough to find yourself in that position, because we don't look at it like that. If yeah, it's, that's good. Yeah, that's if, good. If, we don't. We just we don't. We don't just be real. I think when, it's an honor, man. Yeah, when you when you get that surprise mm-hmm. or when it catch, catch you off guard, and you get that I'm late text or whatever the case may be, we just don't look at it as a very fortunate situation because we don't ever really feel like it's a right time. Yeah. Like, and that's that's a man thing in general, but. Uh, especially when it comes to parenting. Mm-hmm. We just don't feel like it's the right time. But if you're fortunate enough to find yourself in that position, I think you take the resources that you have some, on some of the positive side, some of the more positive influences that you've seen in terms of in terms of parenthood, uh, and you try to look at that. And then the stuff that you don't know, man, you just got to go for what you know. Like, yeah. go for it. But the most important thing is being present. Like I said, emotionally, like being present, financially, like being present to the best of your ability. And we don't have ass when it comes to this thing. I don't mm-hmm. care if they are one block away or yeah. they're a, 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 a 12 hour flight away. You have to do your best within your confines in terms of uh, fatherhood yeah. um, and, and, and parenting. Um, and for me, what I, like, what I would like to see, man, is just the trajectory that, like I said, I, I've alluded to. That we have begun to change the narrative, mm-hmm. <laughs> and and just to keep on seeing some of that positivity in terms of fatherhood, and particularly black fatherhood, yeah. grow yeah. in the capacity that it's doing. I think we have some great influences from on the political spectrum and and, and from the entertainment spectrum that that has opened some of the doors. And 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 again, with us living in a time that we live in, social media. That makes it look that makes it look better and make it feel 
okay mm-hmm. and, and for us to kind of mitigate some of those excuses on why we're not doing what we're supposed to do. Yeah. So I would love to just continue to see. I, don't, I wouldn't even necessarily say it's a trend at this point. I would just love to see that that continuous development yeah. of, of that in particular. Movement. That movement. Yeah. I would love That's to just good. see it, man. We just constantly turn over that leaf and we get better and we yeah. get better and our families get stronger and our families get yeah. stronger. Yeah. Our yeah, wealth yeah, yeah. continue to grow Yeah, um, because I think <laughs> the wealth starts there with being able to solidify that fam- f- family foundation mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, pass it on down, man. That's what it takes. Boy, if you know how to read in between the lines, man, yeah. you hear everything that you need to hear from <laughs> Terrell Hope right now in this moment, man. Hey, bro, have you, did you see that, that video that um that LeBron just posted recently with him and his daughter? Uh-uh. Give me uh, some. Him and his daughter, they like cooking they uh they both have on have on the little aprons and they're at like the island and like okay. making some little dish together okay two things one i'm sick of lebron trying to steal my stuff <laughs> one, <laughs> one talk for two things no that's his he got to talk oh, that's, that's, that's him can't nobody get oh, that but lebron bro i was the one at the island making sandwiches and salad with my daughter bro. right but but you know something man what an honor to have someone with a platform like LeBron James, right, um, who is putting fatherhood on full display, man, right, making it look easy, making it look nice, making it look fulfilling, everything that it is. It's not always easy, but you know there are easy moments. Yeah, because I th- I think we having like 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 LeBron and some of the other ones. We don't actually how they go into particulars. It brings. For one, it just brings some of the coolness to it, and and because sometimes we could be in those positions to where we we, for lack of a better way of explaining it, we're ashamed to showcase or admit to having yeah. a kid, whether it be one, whether it be two, because mm-hmm. it might make, mess you up in the dating pool, yeah. or yeah. you just don't look as polished when it comes to being mm-hmm. the one, whatever the case may be. So sometimes men don't. Eh. I ain't got no. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, that's, I mean, no, I keep that in my back pocket. Right. You know, yeah. so when she find out, she find yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't, you know, we don't showcase it the yeah. right way or even have those transparent conversations. Um, so I think it's, it's, that's cool. That's important to where it's brought to the forefront mm-hmm. that way. Um, because, it, like I said, man, it's just a fortunate position to be in to be able I to so. affect, affect life that way. What do you, man? I mean, I know you. You about to flip the script on me, bro? Man, this your thing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this boy about to pose and put gun. No, nah, it ain't. It's, it's not even. It's not even really that I deep. I know you got it in you. Go ahead. It's not even really that deep, but I've known you now for, man. Some like I said when we first got started, uh, over over fifteen years, mm-hmm. right? And we've taken trips together, man. Mm-hmm. We've done business together. Mm-hmm. We've served on boards together. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, right. So before. Before wife came around, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. So, the it, and it's just cool to see. And you talk about how you've appreciated uh, me in terms of me being a father, man. Mm-hmm. I've appreciated being able to see that trajectory from you. Yeah, you know, grow as an individual yeah. to a unit yeah. to a family. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's such a beautiful thing, man. So you know, I'm just giving you your proverbial flowers I because I I love to see that happen. Um, but in journey, like you said, is, is going on. Th- When's her birthday? February twenty third. Yeah, 24th, man, y'all y'all right around the, y'all right around the corner, yeah. man. Uh, she's going on three, and, and and very very big personality, man. What do you, what are, what are some of the things that you're looking for in terms of your shared experience as a father with her, man? <laughs> uh, that's you know that's kind of an easy question. Yeah, and my response is uh, intimate conversations. Yeah, because the type of conversations that she has as a as a two year old really blows my mind, and how she understands things contextually. Yeah, and so uh, what I'm really looking forward to is just the constant verbal communication, uh, because you know it's a now we we take it for granted. The, the the thought or the practice of communication, mm-hmm. but not everyone knows how to communicate clearly what's on their mind or what's in their heart mm-hmm. or what they're feeling. And I think uh, how I've perceived my daughter so far, she has the capacity of a two year old 
to do those things. To, so I'm, effectively, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So so I'm I'm excited to see what that looks like as she continues to grow and what type of conversations we'll be able to have. Um, Cliff Pennant, have do you feel like the way that she communicate right openly has it helped you improve <laughs> your your form of com- your your matter of communication? Uh, yeah, yeah, it my my form of communication and how I treat her. Because the funniest thing she says is, uh, <laughs> I guess she get this. Uh, I'm not gonna even speak it to her, but like if I'm doing something, I grab her hand, give me her arm. Yeah. I'd be like, man, come on, journey. And then she'll look up at me. She say, "Daddy, be gentle with me." <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and I'm like, and it had your clicks. I'm like, you know something? I'm I may actually be exasperating her if I'm not being gentle. Right. And a lot of times in the role of a of a father of a parent. We don't always think about the things that we do that exasperate our children. Uh, we, but we know immediately how they are working our last nerve. Right. You know what I mean. And so, you know, my baby wanted me to be gentle with her and not she pick me up, daddy. And, and you know, it's like, and then I'm like, I gotta go for it. And so, the fact that she communicates in that in that term, not only does it help me become be a better father, but she really kind of she is teaching me how to treat her already as well in addition to what i already know right right so so that and i think i think that's in, i think that's important for her as she grow into a young woman and a woman yeah to be able to like you said articulate that mm-hmm. um uh because that's that's great i mean obviously she has a better relationship with you than yeah. she will with than she does with you know men in general yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but for, sure. for her to be growing in that capacity to where she can verbalize how she's feeling, how 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 somebody is treating her, mm-hmm. whether it be like you said, as, as simple as touching and saying "come yep, on," yep. or 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 it be having a, a a real conversation, which she could say, <laughs> you got to kind of change it up a little bit mm-hmm. with me in yeah, particular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's and a mean, great yeah. thing right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I well, think that's great, man. That's cool. That's good to hear. Well, you gave me my proverbial, proverbial flowers. Yeah. Can I take the proverbial steering wheel back? Okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> this boy's going to drive me. You know, it, 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 you know, I had it in me. <laughs> hey, know your audience. You know I, know, I know who I'm sitting with. And this is how we go all the time anyway. But, no, as we, as we you know, in, in this proverbial car, as we bring it to, right. the, to a stop, man. Um, man, just tell me what's next for Terrell. Tell the people what's next for Terrell, and we're gonna shut this thing down. I've been in Dallas. Like we've been in Dallas what three years. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just, in terms of a, a business, I just continue to grow my portfolio on on the on the real estate side, and. I don't know, man. Just keep developing as best I can. I'm still trying to get in with you. Just let you, me in. You know what I mean? Have 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 fun. Like I said, you about to leave, but we about to go skydiving. It's 48 hours. I'm sick. 48 hours. Y'all doing it here in Dallas? Yeah. Bro, just give me t- next time. Put me. On. You know how? Dope. You know how I invite you? You still ain't gave me a response about DC yet. So I'm, putting, <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot to the conference. <laughs> exactly. But you know how I send you text, yo. What uh, you doing this weekend? Man, yeah. we about to we about done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knock all this over. Exactly. <laughs> no, chill. But no, man. Next time, because I know it's gonna be the last time. Send me the invite, bro. You know, I, you know, I'll come out here, man. That's a that's a no brainer. And I literally. I've literally been thinking about they cutting up out there. Uh, I've been thinking about skydiving for a minute because my little brother went uh, a couple of years ago, and I know you just did. It, Here's so. the thing, I'm and, and and I tell, you, I don't think this just even applies to skydiving because most while I'm talking to people, right? So you know how it is when you're doing something. Let's let's back a little bit. You know how it is when you're doing something, you throw it out there, and then you have 20 people that yeah, say, yeah. "I'm all oh, for it." Hit me up. So two weeks out, you got 12 people. Yeah. One week out, you you settled at six. Yeah. So it's cut down. And day of. And right. And both, I, both, it's just we both 48 y'all. hours away, <laughs> and I had a conversation with somebody just just earlier this morning, and it's like, ah, oh, man, this this is too soon. Mm-hmm. And I was like, it's gonna always be too soon. Yeah. Whether you do it in two days or whether you do it in twenty days, yep. you're gonna let something just stay on your bucket list. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. You that guy, right? That that, and I'm just that's how I bring it to him. But I think on uh, on just a real level, mm-hmm. God put everything great on the other side of fear. Yeah, 
Yeah. And that's really all it boils down yeah. to. This is just a particular situation. You're scared yeah. about the unknowns. That's but good. you do it. It's so liberating. That's good. <laughs> Since uh, I, I got a line that um, that I stole from uh, from an artist. Uh, and the line says, none of my fears can go where I'm heading. And some of y'all may catch that. Uh, I may have some beehive listeners um, right. on the podcast. <laughs> but no, but yeah, she... You know, when when I heard that line, I, I I feel the same way, man. You know, dare to be to be bold, to be fearless, and to move forward. Whether it's skydiving, whether it's the five dollar entrepreneur that's gonna flip it and make it work for his daughter, right? Or whether it's the single father that decided to move from Nashville to Memphis, uh, back to Memphis, and then to Dallas Ooh. and make it happen. Ooh. And I've seen all those steps, man. So I'm man, proud of you, bro. To make it happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm proud of you for sure, man. You we, didn't, we didn't even to... get into that one. But go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, and we we, and we that, not right now. That you know, I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Break uh, it down, man. I don't no, know. man. So, y'all, you've been listening to Fatherhood is Dope, the podcast, man. Per usual, I always want to encourage you all to subscribe. I know y'all listen. I know y'all support. But let the numbers uh, do the talking because the numbers don't lie. But I do appreciate you all. Subscribe on, on Apple um, subscribe on on Stitcher and Google and Spotify as well, and of course I appreciate all the love from the folks on YouTube um, and all of the platforms. So fatherhood is doing our part every day. Let's continue to call men up to their positions as fathers because it's an honorable position. And if you know somebody, you know a brother um, who could benefit from this conversation, then make sure that you share share this share this podcast, share this video, like, tag, leave a comment, and we're gonna be right back to do it again. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Terrell Hope. I'm Aaron McGee. I feel like I ought to do it. <laughs> Duh. Peace. Well, yeah. You know you always do that. <laughs>